It's now time for Community Conversations, a program focusing on the people working to make the Jonesboro community a better place while offering viewpoints from all sides of the issues. The views expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of KLEK 102.5 FM, the voice of Arkansas Minority Advocacy Council, or our underwriters or sponsors. KLEK 102.5 FM, good morning to you on your Thursday. It's March 19th, 2020. This is Community Conversations. Kayla Wonder is in the studio with you. I'm joined by Kobila Jones, host of Community Conversations, and we are joined today by Mayor Harold Perrin, and also Bill, if you can scoot up a little bit, and Bill Kimball, the City Communications Director for the City of Jonesboro. And Mayor Perrin is here to give all of the listeners and the viewers an update on the city's response to the COVID-19 coronavirus. So, Mayor, how are you doing today? I'm doing fine. How are you doing, Lagandy? Right, so, let's get right into it. Let's just uh, kind of give any updates, anything that the citizens need to know. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Uh, what the city's been doing, uh, uh, trying to do every day, is get out a press release of talking about... Uh, what the city is doing and uh, I think I'll start with uh, basically the uh, Monday uh, we met all weekend on Saturday and uh, Sunday with our department heads uh, many of them are first responders uh, to get organized and uh, the first thing that we done is as you know by hearing and uh, reading about uh, CDC and the Department of Health uh, is that we wanted to to slow down if you will and use social distancing so uh, we had a one point of entry at our uh, city hall municipal building, and uh, we're also taking temperatures there uh, to uh, uh, some people can come in to work at the collection department or collector's department, uh, paying bills, uh, things of that nature. Uh, if builders, uh, builders have been real good about doing all of our email, we're pushing that uh, uh, social, you know, get it through the email, and uh, so they're sending plans to us, blueprints. Uh, and we're working that way on that, so that was a great help. Uh, also, uh, we did uh, close, as you know, uh, last week uh, the uh, uh, in the parks area, uh, Earl Bell, Parker Park, and uh, Allen Park. Uh, and so what we're trying to do is slow down, they call the curve, or the access of people uh, gathering. Now, the city is still using the uh, gathering of 50 people uh, and also the six feet uh, apart on the social distancing. So uh, we've done that. Uh, our street department uh, and public works is, cl is closed there. Uh, of course, many people can <coughs> call in the request there. They don't have to uh, actually walk into that facility. Uh, so our first responders, uh, we have done an incredible job, I think, of uh, uh, actually two or three weeks ago we started our planning of getting our uh, any equipment we might need, uh, and particularly in gloves, uh, even uh, I call it the hazmat suits, same of those things that uh, that we have uh, that they'll need on first responders. So we feel very confident that uh, we're ready uh, for uh, uh, something that uh, we hope that doesn't come uh, very hard. But if it does, then we're going to be ready for it. Okay, Mayor, we definitely appreciate that. And, Bill, you sent out a press release yesterday about a website in which this, uh, citizens can access to get the latest information. Well, let's talk about that just a little bit. Okay, yeah, if you go to, to jonesboro.org, you will notice, I think, high on the page, a COVID-19 link that will take you to uh, our page that informs you of every update we've had every day as well as links to uh, every connection that is providing accurate information. The CDC, uh, the Arkansas Department of Health, and uh, any, anything else we find pertinent. We've also added a uh, email address for you to ask questions. It's COVID-19 at jonesboro.org. And I think you'll also find a phone number on that website. We have, we're setting up a hotline if anybody wants to call. That'll be manned 8 to 5. And if you have an emergency, please dial 911. But uh, when you see uh, that page, you will find a phone number. And I don't have it in front of me at the moment. But uh, it's uh, Bill, it's 870-336-7244. Uh, the mayor has it in front of him. Mayor, could you give it one more time? Uh, yes, the, the the hotline number that we've established for our citizenry is uh, 870 336 
four four. All right. And of course, also, uh, Mayor, one of the things I want to also talk about is the response of the citizens. What, what kind of feedback have you gotten personally about um, the coronavirus? I know you probably have had people c calling you concerned about um, what's going on now and even what's coming down the pipeline. Well, you know, you're absolutely right. Uh, we, and that's exactly why that we uh, chose to uh, set up this hotline as well as the uh, website. Uh, we were getting calls, and they were uh, each one of them was probably different to some degree. Uh, but uh, uh, what we want to do is to uh, put the factual things out there. Hopefully, start stop any rumors uh, that's going around town uh, here in, in Jonesboro. And uh, what I have noticed, uh, one release we had is, you know, like in restaurants and things of that nature uh, about, you know, would you please. Uh, 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 Keep your deal at at least 50 in a crowd, and then have the uh, your their customers maybe six feet apart or whatever. Do the best you can. Uh, I'm really impressed with the response that I've had with uh, with uh, commercial uh, accounts as well as restaurants and things of that nature, and th they seem to be doing a real good job uh, of doing that. And so I'm real pleased that uh, the citizens are responding. Uh, to what they call actual and truthful factual information about this in, uh, uh, thing, uh, coronavirus. Uh, and I think every day, the more we put out, the better we're going to be. To And the whole thing on this, I think, Laganzi, is just calming our citizens down, if you will. Uh, we're not saying that uh, right now we don't have, as of yesterday, we had no confirmed cases in Jonesboro. Uh, but some of the cases in Arkansas are uh, increasing uh, in our other other cities around us and uh, such as uh, in Cleburne County and Pulaski County and some of those things so we watched that map and we were very very uh, cautious that as it gets closer to Jonesboro uh, we want to be ready for that and so once you of course we wish we would never get a confirmed case but it's more likely when instead of if but when that day does come what steps at that point would the city take well, we will, we'll have to uh, look and review that and uh, what we're doing now. Uh, we have a punch list of all the things that we've already implemented. And that came out of that two-day meeting uh, on this weekend. Let me just say this. I want to thank uh, our staff and directors and department heads. They've been absolutely uh, uh, just willing and, uh, uh, to work with me on the weekends or whatever it takes at night uh, to make sure that uh, we're doing the right things uh, and the proper things. And uh, so uh, if, if we do get a confirmed case uh, in Jonesboro, obviously we'll have to look at what we call the CDCs, and they've got different levels, level one, level two, level three, and level four. So we'll have to look at those and see what we can implement uh, that gives us the authority to do that. Now let me say this, you know, there was a rumor around that, uh, again, going back on the restaurants and, uh, uh, and the bars, they call it, and other things that you know are you mayor are you going to close those the answer to that is very clear uh the mayor by state statute does not have the authority at all to close those institutions uh the only people who can close that is going to be the the governor of arkansas or the department of health so uh we, we've been clearing a lot of that up and it seems that the more that we talk to our people and i've always said that the more you talk to your citizenry the better off you're going to be they're going to feel more comfortable, and they're also going to know what's uh, what's on your mind and what are you trying to implement. Okay. Kubila? Yes. Um, look at this um, information that you all sent us, and it's um, community resource references. And yeah. so if people have – if they have questions on – like the first question is, how do I get help running my small business? We know that's a major concern right now. Uh -huh. I saw a story yesterday. Um, the owner or one of the chefs at the Parsonage, you know, did a Facebook video and talked about their status and what they're going to try to do to continue mm -hmm. running. And then I saw that a local businessman was on CNN and talked about, you know, how he's going to take care of his people. And so, again, if you have questions about your small business, because those people are going to feel the impact the hardest versus a major corporation and so and i just want to add to that of course yesterday during the governor's press conference <laughs> he announced some measures that the state 
was going to implement to help small businesses as well. So, uh, Mayor, on top of what yep. Kubila has, have you been in touch with the governor about these programs? Well, I've been in, I've been in touch with the staff, uh, with the governor. He's been very busy, and uh, and I think he would take my call, but <clears throat> I'm trying to let him uh, do his thing and get around the state of Arkansas. But, yes, I have talked to uh, some of the staff in the governor's office, and uh, uh the, the question or the comment you were just talking about a while ago, I think that's very important. And uh, what we're going to do on this Facebook is that, you know, a lot of people that work and stuff do not have time to sit down and look or can look at the press conferences that's, that's, uh, that the governor's had over the state. And I think they've been very good and informative. However, not everybody has an opportunity to see those. And then when it, yeah, when it gets on the 6 or 10 news or whatever, they only take sound bites mm -hmm. of that deal. So... That's a good point you made, and here's what we're going to do. Uh, on any business continuation or anything of that nature of any help that a business can, can have, uh, we're putting that on the website, the agency, uh, the telephone number, uh, their email, website, uh, to do that. That ties back in, really, with our grants division. Uh, I just got uh, uh, a call uh, to our grants division, and there is a quick action uh, uh, loan program that the governor set aside from his rainy day fund for the continuation of these businesses. And so uh, <clears throat> we will be today, uh, I know Bill's people will be putting those on the website. So I encourage people to look at our website, and it depends on which area you want to look at. It could be the business continuation. Uh, it could be anything that, uh, that the governor set up or talked about. Uh, we're trying to help them get that message out. And that's, that's part of the broad approach of our uh, COVID-19 page is uh, we want to have answers for businesses, for churches, okay. uh, as, as well as just common sense measures and what to do if you feel like you're sick. Okay. And also there is information in, um, I've been reading and try not to get too overwhelmed in all of this, however, <laughs> and this is where Dr. Spite and other medical professionals will come in, however, from what I gather with this virus, it did not start as a human virus. It's, it was mainly an animal virus, and somehow it's mutated and Correct. advanced to the point where it can transfer to humans. And that's why we're seeing such an outbreak and spread and why it's doing what it's doing so. And that's what we've seen in, over the, the last few years or many years. Probably that's what all of viruses started from if, if, if you, you get down to it is, uh, you know, you remember the swine flu mm -hmm. and the avian flu and, and those things until they came up with vaccines. They just didn't have the contagious connection to go global <laughs> the way and become a pandemic the way this one has. So again, if you have questions, concerns, talk to medical professionals <laughs> and not lean on your own understanding about this matter. Um, and please try not to spread misinformation Thank you. out there. Um, so All I right, we'll go ahead. No, and then there's also information, people that are unemployed or underemployed, they're concerned about benefits. There's also help reach out to the Arkansas Division of Workforce Services and concerning bills, rent, food, et cetera, United Way of Northeast Arkansas can get you set on the right path. And Mayor, I know you've uh, been in touch with our senators and, and people in Congress, but I, I think the last I've seen, we are expecting individual pay checks to come to individuals in April and May. So that, that will help boost people too. Now, would this include people who only pay taxes in or file, have filed a tax form. Um, okay. I have not seen the, the actual, uh, the requirements, if you will, on that. Okay. I do know uh, that uh, that the President Trump has, uh, uh, and, and the bill has been passed through the House and Senate. Okay. So it's been through the legislative uh, part. So now it's just time of, of uh, putting all the dots and T's to that, if you will, mm -hmm. and getting that out. But. Bill's right. Uh, those checks should be coming out in April, I think, and uh, so that's going to be a big boost, hopefully, to to help our people. Well, can you make a note to check um, for people that fall in the category that receive disability yeah. and other Social Security that don't work traditional jobs? If, you know, what's going to happen for those individuals and those that do not get food stamps and other benefits? Well, from my understanding, I think 
I mean, I don't know in that specific case that you mentioned. I remember from what I was reading about it that regardless of your tax liability, you would still get that money. So if you had a previous debt to the IRS, you know, or you would still get that. Far, now, as far as people on disability who or may receive any other sort of assistance, I'm not sure about that. Um, that would be something that the mayor okay, perhaps excuse me, get some guidance and some clarity on. Yeah. Be glad to do that. No problem. All right, so, Mayor, we are inside of our 2020 Spring Fund Drive. And, of course, uh, in the midst of this drive, we still want to keep the public informed of everything that is going on in the community because that's what we do here at KLK as a community radio station. We do take this responsibility seriously to keep the public informed. So, in your words, could you just kind of tell the listeners why you feel it's important um, for community resources such as KLK to be available to get this information out to the community? I'd be happy to. Uh, you know, the more the more uh, institutions that can get this information out uh, to the people, uh, the better off we're going to be. Because again, uh, they're in a uh, deal of I don't know, uh, and they don't know all the things we've been talking about. Where do I go? What benefits are there? Uh, when am I going to get them? Things of this nature. So, uh, you all do a great job. You've always done a great job. Of uh, getting this information out to the people, uh, you almost attend. Uh, I, I would say you attend all <laughs> of the meetings in town. Uh, that when this is talked about and discussed, uh, you're actually streaming it live, uh, and then they can go back and look at it too. So I'm just going to say my hats off to you because you've done a great job of doing that. Very consistent of getting the the facts out, uh, and uh, I'm going to say this, and again, not because I'm mayor, but even uh, what really showed me the deal on the uh, uh, the last elections and elections we've had here, uh, you cover everybody. You give everybody an opportunity to speak uh, from their heart and, and their platform, and not just one side or whatever. And I think that's incredible. And so, and you're doing the same thing here. Uh, you're bringing in medical people. You're bringing in, uh, say, me today, and other people that we're all going to have to work together on that. And the only way we're going to do uh, do that is get the information out to the people and you've got a great listener, listener base and so uh, we just hope that they and pray that they uh, listen to uh, Kelly K uh, and hopefully we'll be uh, uh, giving them the information that they want and of course yesterday we had Chancellor Danfis um, he called in and we've had a uh, cricket County Judge uh, Marvin Day uh, giving his updates and of course um, for uh, Chancellor Danforth, yourself, Judge Day, or any official that has any updates, you know, we'll happily pass those along as well. And we'll have Chief Elliott on a little bit later today, and I would love to hear from even some other medical professionals, Emerson, because I know that a lot of cities are dealing with this differently than we are, um, since we don't have any positive cases, but I know the hospitals have changed their policies and nursing homes, and so we would love, if you have any connections with people that would love to just give an update, please send them our way. Absolutely, yeah. we'd be happy to, and that and that's a good point. Uh, you mentioned uh, Judge Day uh, and those. And uh, if you'll remember, we had, and I think you might have been there. I don't know if you covered it, but uh, we had uh, uh, Dr. Shane Spikes, myself, and the judge there in the very, very beginning of this, uh, two or three weeks ago, and we talked about some of the things that uh, uh, that we're going to be looking at and having to get ready for, if you will. And uh, we do stay in contact, I do, and my staff with the judge and any other elected officials that we feel like that we need to be getting in contact with every day. I mean, so this is something as, you know, from the time we get up to the time we go home, and even after those hours, we're talking to these people. Okay. Absolutely. Um, got a couple of Facebook comments. Uh, Lisa Perry says, good morning, everyone. Thanks for doing this. Cindy Corbett says, I'm really afraid of this whole thing. My 80-year-old dad with Alzheimer's and cancer lives with my family. I don't want him getting this. Donna Matt Purier says, good morning. I just want to say thank you to all of those that are on the front lines keeping us safe. God bless. We need to do our part. So, Mayor, kind of getting into Cindy's comments, uh, what can the city do to protect our most vulnerable, such well, as the I elderly? Well, I think that uh, the big thing we can do is get the information out on what you should be doing. Uh, obviously, there's an age bracket there. The, more, the people are more vulnerable, if you will, and even have a chronic uh, 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 illness that you have to take medication every day for, uh, things of that nature that I've been reading into. So uh, 
uh, we're trying to get it out to the people of uh, what should you be doing, but I would say that number one is, uh, in this case, uh, the one she just mentioned, I would say that staying in, uh, staying in home, not being around crowds, not, not exposing yourself to, to those things. Uh, and then my understanding is that uh, any health care providers that is doing anything for that family now uh, will continue. Uh, and so uh, I, I just don't be alarmed. I think that we're, we're going to take care of that. But the main thing is just uh, do these major small things that they say do the, you know, the six feet and staying away from people. Uh, wiping things down, things of that nature. Uh, we're doing that now. In fact, we've got a crew that uh, comes into our buildings and wipes down door handles. Uh, one thing I uh, found out uh, two or three days, uh, two or three weeks ago, was even elevators, uh, elevator uh, buttons, and things of that nature is one of the biggest uh, things that could that could yeah. control that. So People we're touch it all the time. Huh? Yeah, so we're wiping everything down we can. So, uh, and if she has any other questions on that and if Bill needs to uh, or call in uh, with her questions on that then that's why we put the hotline in we will get her even more detailed information than I'm telling you this morning and Bill could you give that hotline again for those who are just tuning in I'm gonna let the mayor do it he's got it down oh that's okay it's uh, (laughs) 870-336-7244 all right and so Call that number or email covid19 at jonesboro.org if you have any questions as well. That's great. <laughs> All right, so be sure to follow that information for any help that you may need in regarding this coronavirus sit- situation. So, Mayor, kind of piggybacking again off of, of Cindy. So, let's say, and again, this is not saying that this may happen because we don't want people to get alarmed, but worst case scenario and we the city goes into a complete quarantine, how, and if people aren't allowed to get out, how will the most vulnerable still get the help that they need if people aren't allowed to get out and about? Because they still need, you know, food and supplies and things like that. Right. Uh, again, it goes back to uh, all of these uh, agencies, uh, like the Agency on Aging, uh, all of the uh, uh, people who deliver meals, meals on wheels, things of that nature, uh, we're in contact, we'll be contacting them uh, to make sure that they will go and if at any point in time, I don't think they'd ever stop the service at all. I think it's just a matter of how they do it, uh, more importantly, and to protect them as well as they can even put the stuff at the door, ring the doorbell or knock on the door uh, to make sure that everybody's getting what they need. But that's a very good question. Okay. And what about public transportation? Um, I know that there's been some concerns because of the close quarters on the buses. Right. Uh, we took the uh, recommendations of the CDC uh, on our buses, and what we're doing is, is that the first one roll or two rolls protect the driver, if you will. Uh, just ask the, uh, the ridership to just go back to the next, second, say, the third seat or whatever. Also, we uh, ventilation, uh, we, we open the back windows on that uh, deal where actually what that is is flow, keeping that flow of fresh air coming through uh, the buses. So uh, we have pretty good strict uh, guidelines that we have to follow through the Federal Transit Authority okay. uh, with jets. And uh, so uh, we're going to con- keep on uh, continuing tr- public transit uh, until something else happens or something's declared. Right, and we just want to remind people, as you listed in this information, I know we're running down on time, if you feel sick, please stay home or go get checked out. Like, take those precautions. Don't ignore Now, I know I've been coughing and sniffing. I have sinus drainage, y'all. Please don't shoot me. <laughs> but um, if Well, you I was feel, going to ask you that. <laughs> <laughs> it's this seed that we don't know what Arkansas is going to be like tomorrow. But anyway, um, if you feel something, get checked out. I received an uh, email from Medicaid saying that they are now opened up telemedicine, telehealth. Yes. Uh, they opened up the opportunity option for people to call their doctors and mm-hmm. video chat. That is the that's the key right there, Kibilla. The, the 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 advice is call your doctor uh, because they can ask you questions that you can answer. And I do have this phone number, Leganzi. Uh, St. Bernard's Healthcare is 870-336-5651 or 
5671. And if you, if you have internet access, you can go to uh, St. Bernard's Go, S-T-B-E-R-N-A-R-D-S-G-O dot com. And once you go in there, you can be screened. And it, now it has a payment window, but if you type C-O-V-I-D in that window, that you don't have to pay the $49 fee. Okay. Mayor, we got a question coming in on our Facebook Live. He said, is the city of Jonesboro, and this is an anonymous question, uh, yeah. the, is the city of Jonesboro prepared for if the COVID virus is transferable through currency? And I know what you being a former, former banker, you may can have right. some insight on that. Right. Uh, what I've been told on that is that uh, uh, the copper, it's very hard to stay on. Uh, but any other thing on currency, uh, uh, besides that, uh, uh, that, I would suggest that you uh, take some measure, if you will, to wipe those things down and stuff. We're doing that at our collection department where we're actually uh, uh, spraying uh, the change and stuff that we make our deposits at the, you know, at the end of the day uh, so that as we take it to the bank, then we're, we're trying to be very protective of that. And I think that would also could apply to your mail as well. So. Um, if you have a concern there, you may want to spray your mail down when it comes, when you get it out your mailbox. Uh, that's correct. In fact, uh, we now have a single point uh, of all of our mail and even the vendors that bring things to uh, the municipal building. Uh, they don't come in the building. They come in the vestibule there. Uh, then we do spray it and wipe it down. Uh, and so the, the materials that we've noticed on that, the cardboard, especially boxes, is is not really an issue, but even envelopes and things of that nature, if you'll spray them lightly or wipe them down, that's not going to be a problem with that. Uh, and let them dry for a while, a period of time, and then we deliver that mail to the uh, particular areas uh, within the uh, city hall. All right, and as we get ready to wind down our segment, Mayor, I want to talk about the role of nonprofits, why you feel it's so important to support the nonprofits, especially your food banks and your care providers during this time because obviously as the economy contracts um, donations are going to dry up um, mm -hmm. but you know these organizations are going to be called upon so I just want you to kind of talk about that a little bit as we wind down. Okay uh, the first thing is that uh, uh, on our hotline as well uh, particularly on the hotline we're asking people if they call in is that do you know of any nonprofit organizations that would be willing to volunteer uh, what services do they provide, what's their hours, and et cetera. We're trying to build this database as, as fast as we can. Make sure uh, KLEK is on it. <laughs> right. Well, I'll do that. And so, uh, but a lot of people, you know, uh, are just calling in and saying, hey, I'd I be glad. Uh, several of the churches have called in and said uh, to me, hey, uh, <clears throat> let me know when we can help you and, and what is your needs. So now we've got to screen the need side and then we've also got to put it with the the right nonprofit organization, and they've been very good to uh, to work uh, here uh, with us and provide anything uh, so far. And I know United Way has a has a database, especially with the agencies they fund. So that's right. another great resource. All right. So again, we are inside of our spring fund drive, and we are encouraging you to support KLK so that we can continue to provide information such as we're doing today. Uh, the mayor donates doing every pledge drive he's already sent his donation we definitely thank you for that so mayor anyone you want to challenge or encourage to donate to support as well because again we want to continue to provide this and of course i know people have asked us are we going to still broadcast yes we are still going to broadcast no matter what right well yes i definitely uh, again uh, as you know i've been a supporter of kelly k and and uh and with your new tower and all the things that we're doing here it's amazing every year you increase uh, the uh, the station in, in certain areas that you obviously need to uh, uh, for the citizenry. So uh, I would encourage those out in uh, in Radio Land today just uh, seriously consider making a donation uh, to KLEK. You can do a one-time, I think, uh, contribution, or you can do uh, on a monthly deal. Obviously, I think that uh, I'm going to say it on myself, KLEK would love to have more of the monthly coming in so they know that they have the money coming in. Uh, and, it, and, and the thing about it is, being a businessman, it takes money to operate. And mm -hmm. so that's exactly what these things are doing. This is a nonprofit deal, so all this money is going to uh, things and, and services that we provide back to you, or they do, provide back to you, the citizens. 
So I would highly encourage uh, the folks to uh, seriously consider making a contribution to KLEK. And, of course, you can give by going on our website, KLEKFM.org. You can mail your check to 1411 Franklin Street, Jonesboro, Arkansas, 72401. You can call us, 870-277-1080. And if you have Cash App, it is dollar sign KLEKFM. No amount is too small. We appreciate all support. Mayor, we got about uh, one more minute. We'll let you take us out of here. Well, Thank you, Leganti. Uh, I, again, I just want to, uh, uh, to, to uh, if anything, in the mayor's office, is that we will be uh, doing, uh, starting, I think, tomorrow around 2 o'clock. In fact, I've got Dr. Shane Spax that will be with me. Uh, we will be doing a what's called mayor's briefing, uh, maybe every other day or when we feel it's necessary, we get more information. We're going to get that out, uh, and that will be streamed live, uh, again, through, uh, you can have it on your phone, things of that nature. So. Facebook uh, it, Live. And we'll yeah, definitely Facebook share that. Live. Yeah, Facebook yeah. Live. So uh, I was real, real pleased about that. Uh, and so, uh, you know, and again, the big thing is, is that we just want you to know that your mayor and your, your administration uh, is doing everything it possibly can uh, to get the information out to the, to the citizenry of Jonesboro. And also, uh, just like uh, uh, we said a while ago, just take these simple precautionary deals of washing your hands. Uh, you know, uh, don't go to large gatherings, uh, keep your social distancing, all these things. It's just, you know, we take for granted right now, and I know we get in a hurry sometimes and don't do those things, but just make sure that you do that. And, uh, and if you've got any questions whatsoever, again, I want to encourage people to use our hotline as well as uh, to go on uh, our Facebook. All right. Well, Mayor, Bill, you want to add anything? Uh, just the uh, just the reminder that uh, we've we've got the hotline set up and we've and the the web page uh, COVID nineteen it's at jonesboro.org uh, for any information and if you have questions you know if, if we find there's more information we need to put on there we will, we will provide it but it, it it handles everything from your health to your your business and and everything we 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 know about what's coming all right we want to thank both of you for stopping by the studio today please keep us yeah. informed of any details and we will bring them to you and of course this is our spring fun drive we can't do this without you so we're just asking you to support us and pray for us back with more this is kaylee k 102.5 fm you're listening to community conversations on kaylee k 102.5 fm we'll be right back Thinking about calling it quits in your marriage? I'm Mark Merrill.